I'm Nikita, and in this video, we are going to focus in on a few key factors in double strand brake repair using homologous recombination. So, some factors that we're going to mention are proteins such as the REC BCD complex, the uh, proteins such as REC A, some enzymes, and a very important sequence, DNA sequence, in this mechanism called the chi sequence. So, let's get into it. We have two homologous chromosomes, and one of which is going to get a double strand break on it. And the first step is that a complex of REC B, REC C, and REC D bind to each end of this broken chromosome. So we have a complex of REC B, C, D here, and a complex of REC B, C, D here. Now, these complexes are actually going to chew up the broken ends of the chromosome up until a certain point. So that point actually happens to be after a chi sequence is encountered. So when it hits a chi sequence, and that's a sequence of DNA that essentially codes uh, for or tells the REC BCD complex to stop chewing the three prime end of the broken chromosome. So it's going to stop chewing this end and this end and it's gonna continue on chewing this end for a while. And that's important because, because it stopped chewing the three prime ends, we get the three prime overhangs. And the three prime overhangs are important because, well, that's what's gonna invade the, the homologous chromosome. So before that can happen though, a complex of or a number of proteins called REC A bind to three prime overhang. And this allows this three prime overhang to search for a place in this homologous chromosome where the sequence is almost or pretty much identical to the sequence here. So it's finding a place just like itself on this chromosome. And when it finds that place, it's going to base pair with that place. And that allows DNA polymerase to come in and DNA polymerase 1 and elongate this strand. Now, DNA polymerase 1 is important to keep in mind here because it's a high fidelity DNA polymerase. And that means it's not going to be making any mistakes to uh, introduce mutations into this strand. And that's important because we already have a damaging, um, we already have some damage to our DNA. We don't want to introduce anything uh, on top of that. So on top of everything else, DNA polymerase 1 is actually going to displace this strand over here. And that's important because it's going to interact with this strand over here. So another DNA polymerase it can bind on over here and extend this strand as well. So DNA pal one binds over here, elongates, and then binds over here and elongates. And I have this three prime uh, end written up here because I forgot to mention in the other video, you can think of DNA and RNA uh, synthesis as five prime to three prime because this three prime end is the one always being extended. So if we drew an arrow in which the extension was going, it would be going this way. And another thing I'd like to point out here is because I've mentioned DNA polymerase one and REC A that we are focusing on E. coli, uh, the, way, the way this process happens in E. coli. Now a very similar process happens in humans, it's just a lot more complicated as is the usual with humans. So essentially this process happens in humans and RAD51 is a REC A analog, but there's a lot more stuff going on and it's not entirely well understood. So we'll focus in on E. coli. So we've elongated one strand and now we've elongated the other strand and we can finally ligate the breaks uh, back together. 
And what does this is DNA ligase. So after this, we can migrate these two junctions that are formed. And branch migration is facilitated by the RUV-AB complex, so a complex of RUV-A and RUV-B. Essentially, they help this th stuff move along, along this um, axis here. And finally, RUV-C comes in, stops the migration of these holiday structures, it stops this branch migration, and then cuts, uh, makes a cut in the holiday structures. So let's say cut right here, we would ligate and be left with only one more holiday junction to take care of. And finally, it would cut right here. Let's say it could cut here again, but let's say it cuts over here. And then we would ligate. And remember these ends are going to flip on over, change places essentially. And we would have something that looks like this. So when we, would un when we untangled this, we would get recombined recombinant chrom chromosomes that look just like this. So I hope this was helpful in understanding this really important, really error-free process of DNA double-strand break repair with homologous recombination. This video was brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.